Hello everybody, it's Mr. G coming at you with another Misconceptions in History, and today we're going to be talking about some weird weapons from World War II. Now, I really hope this will turn out to be a multi-part series, we'll see how this goes, and I'm only going to address a few of these weapons, and like I said, specifically this is World War II, and I know there's a lot more during World War II than I'm going to discuss, and I also know there's other time periods that we could discuss as well that I hope to talk about in the future. Now, I have talked about several of these weapons before, like the V3 cannon, or the D-Day tank, so I really won't be going into those. If you want to see them, I have them on previous videos. You can look at my Aggregate Rocket series or my Sherman Tank series to really see others. Now, the first of these unusual weapons I want to talk about is known as the Unrotated Projectile. And I know that's a really weird name, but this was actually just a cover name for a British anti-aircraft system. And it's actually a very unique idea. The idea stemmed around taking rockets, which are still basically in their infancy. And the plan was to fire these rockets up into the sky with a cable attached to them. The rocket itself would have a parachute to slow its descent, and on the other end of this cable would be a mine. And the plane would actually drag the cable until the mine contacted it, and it would explode. The British deployed these both on naval units and on the ground and they actually developed what was known as the z battery which was the three inch version of this and by 1940 they had deployed close to 8,000 of these in protection of the british homeland and they even had success during the battle of britain taking down german bombers another defensive weapon that was developed known as the hedgehog or anti-submarine projector and this is actually one of my favorites so basically if you've ever seen any war movie you've heard of the depth charge which is the most common anti-submarine weapon. And this was essentially a explosive charge that would sink and it would utilize a timer or a barometric fuse which was designed basically on depth to be detonated. However, the success rate on these is not that high. The Hedgehog was designed to be an improvement. Essentially, it was a mortar system that could fire up to 24 warheads at one time. And these were utilized contact fuses rather than the timer barometric ones. So that the second they impacted a submarine, they would explode, causing more damage. And by comparison, when you look at just the British alone, who were the main user of the hedgehogs, their kill ratios with the depth charge was about 60 to 1. So for every... 60 deployments, they would get one submarine, whereas the Hedgehog had a ratio of 5.7 to 1, meaning basically for every six attacks they did this, they would sink a submarine. This meant that the Hedgehog system was about 10 times more effective in anti-submarine roles. Next weapon we're going to discuss is the Krumlov, which literally translates to curved barrel in English. And this basically was a weapons platform that filled a while a small niche, it was actually an interesting idea. Because of all the city fighting that was occurring in Europe during World War II, the Germans developed a way to basically shoot around a corner to protect their troops. They utilized the world's first assault rifle, the Sturm Gewehr 44, absolutely excellent piece of hardware, and basically attached curved barrels to it to allow them to shoot different angles. And this was set up in 30, 45, and 60 degree angles, and even a 90 degree bend. They even develop an optic system for these that would allow them to follow the angle and shoot around corners. Now because of this design, the bullets traveling down the barrel would actually have more stress on the barrel and the barrels would actually be worn down faster. Additionally, the bullets would actually shatter and basically create a shotgun effect that was actually useful in an anti-personnel role. Now the next unusual weapon we have is the Panjandrum, which is really a weird weapon just the overall idea behind it and it was born out of necessity and I do mean necessity the pajandrum was created basically to take on the defenses of the Atlantic wall and if you don't know what the Atlantic wall is this was this massive 1700 mile defensive barrier basically created by the German military to protect themselves from invasion from the Atlantic Ocean so the Panjandrum was created to basically take on these defenses. And basically it was these two big steel wheels about 10 feet in diameter with rockets attached to them and an explosive place in the middle. And the idea was you would launch this from the sea and the rocket motors would kick off and it would basically drive up the beach, land up against a target, concrete barrier, something like that, explode. And then you'd have a clear path to send troops through. However, in testing, it was found to be incredibly unstable. They couldn't get all the rockets to light. They couldn't get it to actually go straight line. 
and the project was abandoned. They never even deployed it. Now onto the Japanese intercontinental weapon, the Fugo balloon bomb. I know you're probably looking at this going, Mr. G, didn't this just pop up in the news recently? And yes, there was something about something similar, but this actually was an incendiary weapon developed by the Japanese during World War II. These 33-foot-wide balloons actually carried a mixture of both incendiary and high explosives, and they were designed to be deployed into the jet stream above Japan, and they would float across the Pacific Ocean, and then a series of ballast systems and barometric sensors were designed to eventually release the balloon's pressure, lower it over the west coast of the United States, where they would detonate their cargo in hopes of basically setting the west coast on fire. Out of the 9,300 they deployed, about 300 or so actually made it to the United States. And there was actually one deadly incident in Bly, Oregon, where six civilians actually discovered the bomb and it went off and killed them. The next weapon could have potentially been the most dangerous animal attack in military history, and that's the bat bomb. And essentially this was a plan to take this experimental bomb and utilize Mexican free tail bats with a small incendiary explosive attached to their body. And the idea was that the bomb would be dropped, a parachute would slow it down, a series of trays would actually deploy with the bomb, the bats would actually come out of it, they would be in hibernation up until that point, they would deploy, the bats would deploy, they would find a place to roost, typically in the attics of homes in Japan, and since most of these homes were made out of wood, once the incendiary went off, it would set the home on fire with a plan of being able to damage multiple buildings within roughly a 20 to 40 mile radius. And even though a setback to the plan involved the bats actually escaping and burning down part of Carlsbad Army Airfield Base, it did demonstrate the feasibility of them. But basically, the bat bomb was too long in development. When it was transferred to the Navy, it was still about two years away from deployment. And Admiral Ernest J. King basically said, this is taking too long. It's not worth our effort. Let's cancel the project. So there you have it. Some of the weird weapons of World War II. I know this isn't all of them. There's still a ton out there. We could go into the death rays and different weapons like acoustic cannons and things like that. The I-400 submarines. I would love to discuss. I absolutely love those. So I will probably reach back at these at another time. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to talking to you all in the next time.